Well, uh, I'm here in town and I uh, had to do an errand here to fix the uh, weed whacker. And uh, so I wanted to take this moment while I'm waiting for my bus to go back to the Hamlet area, the bus that goes to the Hamlets and my Hamlet, and just talk to you about uh, the travel experience of traveling in the world and my travel experience about staying in guest houses. Just talk about this, talk about guest houses in India and in Nepal, but I didn't stay in any guest house in Nepal, but I did stay in guest houses in India and Airbnbs. So let me talk to you about that in a moment. Let me walk up towards the park and sit down and I'm carrying the weed whacker here that's for cutting grass. I had to get it fixed because the uh, cord that you pulled to start the engine snapped. So let's go. I want to fly like an eagle or like a kite. So I just got to be careful I don't hit anybody with this long thing that I'm carrying. And a uh, little bit of the town life. I'm doing this on my phone because it's easier. You can make a longer video, a little shaky, but a longer video without any editing and a straight upload from here to the uh, channel. People having their coffee here on a Friday, 10.30 in the morning. Somebody walking their doggy. Doggy do, hey, how are you? A little pet shop right over there. They sell doggy ice cream, doggy products that are 100% natural, no sugar added, no salt. They even sell doggy ice cream in another one. There you go. Doggy shop there with all the little stuff. And then for the bodybuilders, right there. And the Cosmetic Palace, Palacio de los Cosméticos. Let's go into the park, people hanging out here having their coffee or whatever. So before I get into the story, let me just show you here the town square. This is the main town square. There goes the church right there. And people, Friday morning, another dog, and I'm going to sit somewhere over here where I can keep talking and not bothering anybody. I'm going to lay this down right over here. So... These dudes who go around playing their instruments and for money, musicians, and somebody's singing over there. Well, I don't know where, but so am I recording? Yeah. So uh, the thing about guest houses in India when you're traveling, or cheap accommodation in general, I mean, if you want to, if you're traveling on a tight budget or a bare bones budget in uh, India or Nepal or Asia in general, or even Mexico, but let's talk about Asia, India, where I've been to twice. Um, you can get things that are as cheap as, I remember in Bhaktapur, some place where they were renting out these basic, like super basic rooms. It was just a little room, it was just a little bed, and it was like the mattress, it was not even the mattress, I think it was more like a little cot. Or like a little padding or whatever it was because I remember trying out quickly but I couldn't stay there because they they told me they had rented it out to somebody else or whatever and it was like 300 rupees for the night I remember the guy told me and at that moment the rupee was 84 dollars I mean 84 rupees for a US dollar excuse me and um, 8 16 24 it was like three dollars and fifty cents back in uh, January or early February of this year three dollars and fifty cents and you didn't have your own bathroom no bathroom you had a shared bathroom outside with other people in the shower and stuff like that so i mean that's as cheap as you, i saw but i didn't stay there but then you would stay in a place like pushkar i stayed at a guest house there pretty cool guest house you've probably seen it in one of my videos about pushkar and uh I remember on booking.com it was at 450 rupees a night and they had several different options and some rooms were a little more expensive maybe by 50 rupees or 80 rupees more expensive but like 450 rupees on booking.com that's like 8, 16, 12, 32, 40 it's like five dollars and fifty cents a night but then I remember I negotiated the price with the manager of the uh, Airbnb of the, of the guest house and I got it uh, for like I paid for 30 days and it was dirt cheap. 
I got it came out to like 350 rupees a night. So I saved like 100 rupees a night, like a dollar and some change. So I saved like 30 something dollars. I remember it cost me like 135, 138 dollars for 30 days that I paid for. But with very basic cheap accommodation in terms of travel, budget travelers comes inconvenience. Uh, some of these rooms are really uh, basic. They might have bed bugs. There's a lot of noise coming from outside because it's on a busy street. Or maybe the neighbors making a lot of noise. The, the beds, the mattresses are very uncomfortable in general. They're not really comfortable mattresses. The bed sheets sometimes leave something to be desired. You look at them and you say, was this part of a, a crime scene or something? Because I see like blood on it or stains. Or this. And you got to keep in mind that in India, uh, most people don't have washing machines or that service anywhere. People wash by hand and they use maybe uh, detergents that are not very good to take out those stains. So keep those things in mind when you're traveling to India and whatever. If you want to travel with a cheap budget because you could get more done, travel longer, and just spend more money on good food at cafes or street food, that's the thing about cheap accommodation. And you won't, and sometimes you won't really have good internet speed, but uh, at the places that I got, most of them I got on Airbnb. But I did stay in two hostels, same company, the hosteler, one in Jaipur. Didn't like that experience because the, the people in the uh, hostel, in the room, in the dorm room, were very noisy. And I had to really tell one of the guys, like, answering the phone at 11.30 p.m., a phone call, and talk, and kept talking instead of taking it out of the room. I'm like, hey, yo, buddy. I had to tell him in English. I didn't tell him in Hindi. I didn't even know if he spoke Hindi because uh, he might... That was not in Jaipur. That was even in, that was in uh, Delhi. But the hostel is pretty good. But sometimes you got travel uh, travelers that are not really um, respectful, you know, considerate of other people sleeping at that time. And I had to say to the dude, yo, man, take your phone call outside in an angry tone. I mean, you have very good uh, hostels, like the good chains. If you want to stay in good hostel chains, you got Go Stops. You got the Hosteller with double L. You got Zostel, or they say Zostel in India with a Z. Z O S T E L. And there's another one called Mustache. Uh, backpack, and there's another one called Backpackers, Mad Packers uh, chain. So these are like the chains that I saw in some places, like in Amritsar, I saw them in Udaipur. Uh, I think they have a, a, a not a hostel, but I think they have a zostel in uh, Pushkar. Pushkar is amazing. Pushkar is amazing. Rishikesh is amazing. They have zostel and hosteler in Rishikesh. Shalom. Shalom is another one that they have in India. I saw in a couple of places. But the guest houses of times are better a better uh, choice if you want your own private room and you can get like private rooms in those guest houses for as little as. Three dollars and fifty cents a night. If you do long term or just the regular thing, like five bucks a night. And if you want to splurge a little more, maybe ten dollars a night. I mean, your own private room, even your own private bathroom. Some uh, rooms might be cheaper because they don't have a, their own private bathroom, so you have a shared bathroom. But you know, you don't want a shared bathroom with somebody else. I mean, if you got to go to the toilet quickly, and there's nothing else available, how are you going to hold it in? You know, but. I understand if you're traveling on a cheap budget. And like I said, sometimes the sleeping accommodation, the mattress is crap. It's noisy outside. Like I remember in Pushkar, my, my room, the window was facing the street on the first floor. And there were a lot of pilgrims uh, coming in every day at 4 in the morning and talking loudly, walking by, would wake me up. So those are some of the cons, pros and cons. Those are cons. They are cheap. Um, just... My, my, my advice is, if you're going to stay somewhere long term, like for three weeks, and you want to negotiate a good price, uh, uh, go to the different places and test out the bed first. Look at a bed before you even negotiate the price. And if you like the way it feels and you look at the traffic, what kind of traffic is passing by there at that moment in terms of people and cars? Is it on a busy street, on a side street that's busy, whatever, tends to be noisy? Because they will not tell you the truth. Some of these people will not tell you the truth because they want your business. Some people will tell you the truth. They'll tell you, I think it's better you get this room on the inner side of the guest house 
or the hostel away from the, the, the street so that you can have more peace and quiet, but you probably won't have a window because, it, it, like, sometimes they don't have a window because they're on the inner part with sharing another property wall. And that's it with another property, I mean another home. That's not to say that you won't find a good guest house or a guest house, a nice guest house with a very decent mattress and a decent pillow. But usually, since they're cheap, they're budget, really super budget, bare bones travel budget lodgings, places to stay at, don't expect to get good mattresses. I mean, if you're going to have a very nice mattress, a very nice pillow, very nice bathroom and everything, you're going to be paying more money because you're going to be staying in a higher end or at least a mid-range guest house or hostel. Like there's a good hostel called Dream Yard Hostel in Udaipur. That hostel was really nice. All the accommodation and everything was really, really nice. I didn't stay there, but uh, a guy I met, he was staying there. He told me it was pretty good and I went there to have lunch a couple of times. And the Wi-Fi was, the speed was super fast. It was good to work with in a beautiful view of Lake Pichola there in Udaipur in the old city. So yeah, sometimes there are hostels, but they're gonna be more expensive. So you got the cheap, dirt cheap hostels and you got the dirt cheap guest houses. And then you have guest houses that are more luxurious, more expensive. So just keep these things in mind, guys. Uh, it might not be pretty, it might be pretty, you might have a good experience. Airbnb, uh, it's a hit and miss. Sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. It was a hit in a sense, just for uh, you know money, value kind of thing, in terms of cost ratio, whatever, cost benefit. When I was there, I did get a, uh, but the other places that I got to Airbnb were crap. And then the last two places I didn't get on Airbnb, were, which were Udaipur and Pushkar. I just just arrived in Udaipur myself, but I had already made contact with the Haveli. It's a castle, and I stayed there. You can see the video about that. I'll maybe leave it as a link in the description box or at the end of this video. And it was a pretty nice place, but the, the, the mattress was not that good, but everything else was pretty nice. And that's it, uh, Pushkar, I just arrived. I did some research before getting there, before I got to Pushkar online, looking for guest houses and looking for reviews. Reviews is a good way, just, if you see that the guest house or the hostel has more than 300 or 400 reviews, there's something good there possibly. And then you gotta see the stars, how many stars they give it. And read the reviews, and especially reviews by foreigners, not by people that have Indian names or whatever, Asian names, look at, reviews that are posted by foreigners people with european last names or american last names or you know spanish last names because then those are not people that are paid to write false reviews fake reviews because india unfortunately one of the negatives about india is that these hostels and these guest houses some of them and hotels pay these guys these people some money to go ahead and write a bunch of negative review I mean a bunch of positive reviews about their place and also when you're the church bells are ringing when you are uh, reading these reviews make sure you look at if they're talking about the room if they talk about the bed how good the bed is how clean or not clean the room is the bathroom how clean or not clean the bathroom is and the area is it quiet or noisy right these are things in the reviews. If the reviews mention these four things, it's a legitimate review. And like I said, by foreigners, not by local Indians or Nepali people or whatever. Especially Indians, unfortunately, they do that. A lot of scamming, lying uh, with those kind of businesses. I know some people are going to hate me and saying this and that's a lie, but it's that's what I've heard from other travelers. And when I was there, I just saw the places, the places I visited and I talked to other travelers and sometimes you would get mixed reviews, mixed feelings. But India, as a country to visit, I love it. I love it. But the next time I go back, I go back with very good money and stay with better accommodation, better bedding, and of course AC. You're not going to get an air conditioner in those cheap, cheap hostels or cheap, cheap guest houses. But the hosteler, the hosteler does have a AC and it was working 
in both. Uh, it was working in Delhi when I was there. It was lovely, and they kept it so clean in Delhi. It was a, such a clean, clean thing. So that's it. I'm going to be just talking about my experiences, my travel experiences on this channel now. In the background part will be these places in Colombia and doing mountain biking when I buy my mountain bike somewhere down the line this year and doing hiking. That's where my videos are going to be focused on. No more promoting whatever and whatever in terms of where to live here and nothing like that. Staying off people's radar. I'll only say this one time and that's it. If you got this far into the video, you know what I'm talking about. So more to come. Right now I'm uploading a lot of shorts videos uh, that I've done remixes from the uh, travels I've done in India. And if you want to see the full video, the related video is in there in the description area or below the description area. You will you can click on the related video like the whole video that the shorts came from. And that's it. This is Colombia over and out.